is changing up. Uh, the Spoiler warning, as Famous opens up to Kanan, dangerous secrets are disclosed, and Raquel makes a last-ditch effort to patch things up with Lou Howard tries to get closer to the task force, while Marvin battles with his job as stage dad. The program this week started with Raquel receiving an unexpected visit from Pernessa. Pernessa was not only banging on Raquel's front door, but she was also brandishing a gun to her when she opened it. Raquel had no idea where Unique was, of course, when she asked her. Raquel was allowed to take the revolver out of Pernessa's hands after she persisted in accusing her of doing something to Unique and declared her love for him. Raquel clarified that she only refrained from killing her because she knew Unique wouldn't approve. The only reason you still alive right now is because I know he don't want me to hurt you. Raquel restated that Pernessa had done nothing to Unique when she had cooled down. Raquel then brought up Ronnie, whom Pernessa had never imagined would harm his younger brother in this way. Considering murders, the one that Famous committed is still very much on his mind. Famous discusses his feelings and his experiences after killing Freddy on a brand new song. Lou confides in Famous during a lengthy talk that he must use the microphone to release all of the venom within him. He was very clear that things became lighter when said aloud. Let his honesty save him, he said to him in closing. What transpired during the remainder of the show was greatly influenced by this counsel. Howard asks Agent Tanner whether they have any other possibilities in mind after he states that he doesn't think Crown was involved in any of the recent crimes. In response, Tanner informs him that he is not permitted to divulge that information to anyone outside the team. A rehearsal that Juke's team conducted for a few record executives didn't always go as expected. After the ladies' performance, Marvin started arguing with the record executives that Juke should be the lead and that the girls should rock. Even though her father apologized and made an effort to justify his conduct, Juke was deeply offended by this and ended up throwing her father out. Returning to the crib, Famous made the decision to add some more explanations. After recalling what Lou had said, Famous at last acknowledged that he was aware of how the gun ended up in Kanan's backpack. When Kanan found out what his best buddy had been hiding from him, he became furious. He ejected Famous from his own home because he was so furious. You got five minutes to pack your shit and get the fuck out of here, man. It seems like Marvin did not cause any trouble for the females. The record executives speculated that perhaps there was something worth exploring. Strangely enough, Nkia had numerous grievances but didn't. She claimed that none of the females had volunteered to take the lead, that their chemistry was non-existent, and that their choreography was careless. She gave each of the three females a task to show that they were the greatest. When Raquel brought up Ronnie's name to Pernessa, she realized something was wrong. Upon her return home, Unique's baby mother discovered Ronnie had taken Unique's jewels. Pernessa tried to stop him, but Ronnie shoved her to the ground, grabbed a suitcase, and walked out without a word. A lot of words were being exchanged at Raquel's place. Just as Kanan and Raquel were getting into a heated dispute over the gun incident, Ms. Walsh paid them another unexpected visit. The guy who prevented Kanan from being punished for that was attempting to protect himself in the same way. When Howard went to see Captain Baptiste, there was going to be a shift, so Howard asked if he could switch to narcotics. He said he would remove the task force from Baptiste's back if he could secure the job. Now that his brother was gone, on. Ronnie went to see Juliana once again with the intention of conducting business. We witnessed the start of a new collaboration when she clarified that their business is between the two of them alone. As one might anticipate, Kanan was reserved when speaking with Ms. Walsh. She informed them that she was happy with the situation as it was, and even though she would return, what she had observed gave her hope. After Ms. Walsh left, Kanan and Raquel immediately resumed their disagreement. Raquel assured Kanan that as he grew older, he would comprehend the reasons behind her actions. He said that he would never understand and anything, especially not her, before turning to leave. Shirley serves Marvin a drink at Café Vu after observing that he doesn't seem very hot. When Lou arrives, he can sense that his brother is having trouble with something. Marvin tells Juke what transpired earlier in the day. Lou tells his older brother that although the family SH asterisk T is difficult, he should persevere. Moving his cannabis appears to be something Kanan has gotten easier at. That must be partly because Kanan employs a large number of delivery guys, the majority of whom he acquired from Paul. Paul approaches Kanan once more and bemoans the fact that the couriers are working working for Kanan and not for him as much. According to Kanan, the reason they keep coming back to him is because he pays them more. Paul backtracks on his promise to call the police and turn informant once Kanan asserts his authority. When the two cross paths in the middle, Kanan offers Paul two delivery men to employ that day. It was none other than Ronnie who was observing the entire exchange between Kanan and Paul. Remarkably, Ronnie's sole purpose in visiting Kanan was to extend an invitation to a party he was hosting that evening. Kanan
Megan's parents got together to talk about Unique in a covert location. Howard gave Raquel the information, though little of it, that Unique had passed away. Raquel explained the distinction between someone who is conscious and someone who is afraid throughout their talk. She made it clear that she was aware. When Marvin enters their crib, Juke is at her desk studying her test results, which read, Congratulations, you qualified. He expresses regret for his behavior during the rehearsal the day before. Juke apologizes to her father for yelling at him, acknowledging that she understood what he was trying to accomplish. She admits that he could have had a point when it came to her taking charge of the group. In yet another touching exchange, Marvin acknowledges that he needs Juke's assistance in order to comprehend what it means to be a decent father. At this time, it's clear that the entire Thomas family, especially Lou and Raquel, needs assistance. The family matriarch arrived and expressed her regrets to her younger brother for being absent at the club launch. Lou isn't interested in hearing Raquel, S attempts to show her brother love, support, or respect. Lou remarks that the two of them have nowhere to go. He rants about how she constantly took advantage of him. He goes on to say that Dewiz, Scrap, and Zisa may still be alive if he had told her no earlier. Raquel interrupts him before he can say anything more, reminding him that he is the only one with his own body and that he must accept responsibility for it. After Raquel left, Lou picked up the bottle and started drinking, something we haven't seen him do in the previous two episodes due to the intense argument. Gerald mentioned to Marvin that he had given it some thought and that it could make sense for him to write a story about Juke for The Voice as they sat at the park talking about their daughters. A man who worked at Lane's and knew Tony D, Marvin's former flame from seasons 1 and 2, approached them after Marvin thanked Gerald. Marvin pretended not to know him or Tony, playing it cool. Regretfully, Gerald appeared to be aware that he was undoubtedly concealing something. Kanan continued to conceal a great deal from Juke. Later that evening, he took her and Aisha to the party, and when Juke saw that it was Ronnie's party, she was a little taken aback. They are interrupted after she brings up Unique's disappearance, and Ronnie responds that he's taking a break and will be back. When Snaps and Pop greet Kanan, they note that Ronnie has been telling them that his business is booming. When Juke asks what business he's in, Kanan replies that he's just trying to make ends meet. Then, when she presses Kanan about what transpired between him and Famous, he essentially avoids her question by saying that they are at a party. Juke moves in between Kanan and Aisha when they are dancing out of jealousy and uneasiness. She claims that's because she practiced with Aisha in the morning. That may have contributed, but it wasn't the primary cause. Reluctantly, Kanan consents to go with the girls until Ronnie approaches and informs him that some of the older people would like to see him. Juke tries to persuade Kanan out of it by informing Ronnie that they're heading out and that Kanan doesn't really need to talk to any thugsters in the first place. Juke demonstrates her keen observational skills and depth of knowledge by identifying every player at the party, even after Ronnie asserts that they are not gangsters. In the end, Kanan chooses to remain. Kanan replies that it doesn't matter what his mother wants when Juke tells him that Raquel wouldn't want him there. Lou just wanted to get his mind cleaned back at the studio. He is shown hallucinating Scrappy once more, but this time he is engaged in a video game. Lou, still battling his issues, keeps drinking despite his distress. Ronnie later came out to Kanan at the club and said they wanted to collaborate with him. Pop and Snaps clarified that they dabbled with other types of labor, such as easier to move and more lucrative projects. Given that all he had were people riding motorcycles, Kanan wondered why they needed him. They mentioned that he's already up and running as they carried on with their presentation. In response, Kanan informed them that his business was solely his own and unrelated to his mother. FCK Raquel, Ronnie remarked with ease after Pop affirmed that they were aware of it beforehand. As Kanan sat there, taking in everything that was happening, Snaps repeated what he had stated. She and Marvin had a conversation at Raquel's property, where a building's pipes burst that will alter the course of the season. Raquel was frustrated because it looked like everyone was trying to get a better look at her right now. Remarkably, the police officers who had been harassing her throughout the season happened to drive by at the same moment. Marvin then brought up unique. Raquel affirmed that he had passed away. Raquel vented more to her brother, telling him that she had truly just quit the game because she felt it was the right thing to do and that it was an easy decision given the state of her business at the time. She at last acknowledged that she wasn't cut out to be a landlord. She told Marvin that she should quit trying so hard to be someone she wasn't and that her purpose on earth was to move weight. All the old heads were back at the club, preparing to snap a group photo. Snaps checked to make sure Kanan was in it before they left. When Raquel and Marvin visited Stefano the following day, he was over joyed to see them. Raquel informed Stefano that she wished to continue what Unique had started with him after he had apologized regarding Unique. Stefano observed that Raquel was hesitant to come and go, and that he wanted someone he could rely on. Marvin interrupted right away, telling Stefano that he knew he could rely on Raquel to remove Sal Boselli. Stefano wanted to hear this one last time before he would agree to do business with the Thomas family. Now that Raquel is back inside, Stefano has made it apparent that there is only one route out. In relation to being in, Kanan is currently fully in. Ronnie knocked on his door, waking him up. Ronnie informed Kanan that it was time to report to work as
as soon as he entered, and he began removing bricks from his backpack. It appears that they have become official partners. Tanner leads Howard into the police station, where he asks him about a certain person and then gives him a dossier about them. In response, Howard tells him that the man is constantly interested in something and that he served time for distribution. Tanner continues by telling him that a witness who was subsequently killed had connected the individual to a cocaine operation, Tony D. As we can see, the person of interest just so happens to be Marvin. Tanner claimed that a first grader could fit the puzzle together. Lou followed the same counsel he had given famous earlier in the episode as the episode came to a close. Lou, who had been drinking, went to Scrappy's mother's house and told her everything that had occurred to her son. While Scrappy's mother sat there in complete shock and dismay, he apologized and accepted responsibility for what had happened. What effect will Lou's confession have on the family as a whole? How is Scrappy's mother going to use the information? How will the business venture of Snaps, Pops, Ronnie, and Kanan turn out? When will Raquel learn about Kanan from Juke? Now that Raquel is back in the game, what can we anticipate from her? Will Marvin wind up behind bars again? There are just four episodes left in the season, and already there are a ton of unanswered questions. Please share your thoughts on this episode and your predictions for the next one in the comments section below.